the vision of Hermes. One day, Hermes, after reflecting on the origin of things, fell asleep. A dull torpor took possession of his body, but in proportion as the latter grew benumbed, his spirit ascended into space. Then, an immense being of indeterminate form seemed to call him by name. Who art thou? said the terrified Hermes. I am Osiris, the sovereign intelligence who is able to unveil all things. What desirest thou? To behold the source of beings, O divine Osiris, and to know God, thou shalt be satisfied. Immediately, Hermes felt himself plunged in a delicious light, and his pellucid billows passed the ravishing forms of all beings. Suddenly, a terrifying encircling darkness descended upon him. Hermes was in a humid chaos, filled with smoke and with a heavy rumbling sound. Then a voice rose from the abyss, the cry of light. At once, a quick, a quick leaping flame darted forth from the humid depths, reaching to the ethereal heights. Hermes ascended with it and found himself again in the expanse of space. Order began to clear up chaos in the abyss. Choruses of constellations spread above his head, and the voice of light filled infinity. Dost thou understand what thou hast seen? said Osiris to Hermes, bound down in his dream and suspended between earth and sky. No, said Hermes, thou will now learn. Thou hast just seen what exists from all eternity. The light thou didst first see is the divine intelligence which contains all things in potentiality, enclosing the models of all beings. The darkness in which thou wast afterwards plunged is the material world on which the men of earth live. But the fire thou didst behold, shooting forth from the depths, is the divine word. God is the Father, the Word is the Son, and their union is life. What marvelous sense has opened out to me? asked Hermes. I no longer see with the eyes of the body, but with those of the spirit. How has that come to pass? Child of dust replied Osiris. It is because the word is in thee, that in thee which hears, sees, and acts is the word itself, the sacred fire, the creative utterance. Since things are so, said Hermes, grant that I may see the light of the world, the path of souls from which man comes and to which he returns. Be it done according to thy desire. Hermes became heavier than a stone and fell through space like a meteorite. Finally, he reached the summit of a mountain. It was night, and the earth was gloomy and deserted, and his limbs seemed heavy, as heavy as iron. Raise thine eyes and look, said the voice of Osiris. Then Hermes saw a wonderful sight. The starry heavens, stretching through infinite space, enveloped him with seven luminous spheres. In one glance, Hermes saw the seven heavens stretching above his head, tier upon tier, like seven transparent and concentric globes, the side rail center of which he now occupied. The Milky Way formed the girdle of the last. In each sphere, there ro rolled a planet accompanied by a genius of different form, sign, and light. Whilst Hermes, dazzled by the sight, was contemplating their widespread efflorescence and majestic movements, the voice said to him, Look, listen, and understand. Thou seest the seven spheres of all life, through them is accomplished the fall and ascent of souls. The seven genii are the seven rays of the word light. Each of them commands one sphere of the spirit, one phase of the life soul. The one nearest to thee is the genius of the moon. With his disquieting smile, 
and crown of silver sickle. He presides over births and deaths, sets free souls from bodies, and draws them into his ray. Above him, pale mercury points out the path to ascending or descending souls with his caduceus, which contains all knowledge. Higher still shining, Venus holds the mirror of love in which souls forget and recognize them in turn. Above her, the genius of the sun raises the triumphal torch of eternal beauty. At a yet loftier height, Mars brandishes the sword of justice and thrown on the astral sphere, Jupiter holds the scepter of supreme power, which is divine intelligence. At the boundaries of the world, beneath the sign of the zodiac, Saturn bears the globe of universal wisdom. I see, said Hermes, the seven regions which comprise the visible and invisible worlds. I see the seven rays of the word light, of the one God who traverses them and governs them by these rays. Still, O oh master, how does mankind journey through all these worlds? Dost thou see, said Osiris, a luminous seed fall from the regions of the Milky Way into the seventh sphere? These are germs of souls. They live like faint vapors in the region of Saturn, gay and free from care, knowing not their own happiness. On falling from sphere to sphere, however, they put on increasingly heavier envelopes. In each incarnation, they acquire a new corporeal sense, in harmony with the surroundings in which they are living. Their vital energy increases, but in proportion as they enter into denser bodies, they lose the memory of their celestial origin. Thus is affected the fall of souls, which come from the divine ether. Ever more and more captivated by matter and intoxicated by life, they fling themselves like a rain of fire with quiverings of voluptuous delight through the regions of grief, love, and death right into their earthly prison, where there were thou thyself lamentest held down by the fiery center of the earth, and where divine life appears to be nothing more than an empty dream. Can souls die? asked Hermes. Yes, replied the voice of Osiris. Many perish in the fatal descent. The soul is the daughter of heaven, and its journey is a test. If it loses the memory of its origin and its unbridled love of matter, the divine spark which was in it and which might have become more brilliant than a star, returns to the ethereal region, a lifeless atom, and the soul disaggregates in the vortex of gross elements. Hermes shuddered at these words for a raging tempest enveloped him in a black mist. The seven spheres disappeared beneath dense vapors. In them he saw human specters uttering strange cries carried off and torn by phantoms of monsters and animals amidst nameless groans and blasphemies. Such is the destiny, said Osiris, of souls irremediably base and evil. Their torture finishes only with their destruction, which includes the loss of all consciousness. The vapors are now dispersing. The seven spheres reappear beneath the firmament. Look on this side. Do you see this swarm of souls trying to mount once more to the lunar regions? Some are beaten back to earth like eddies of birds beneath the might of the tempest. The rest with mighty wings reach the upper sphere, which draws them with it as it rotates. Once they have come to this sphere, they recover their vision of divine things. This time, however, they are not content to reflect them in the dream of a powerless happiness. 
they become impregnated, thereby with the lucidity of a Greek enlightened consciousness, the energy of a will acquired through struggle and strife. They become luminous, for they possess the divine in themselves and radiate it in their acts. Strengthen therefore thy soul, O Hermes. Calm thy darkened mind by contemplating these distant flights of souls which mount the seven spheres and are scattered about therein like sheaves of sparks. Thou also canst follow them, but a strong will it needs to rise. Look how they swarm and form into divine choruses. Each places itself beneath its favorite genius. The most beautiful dwell in the solar region. The most powerful rise to Saturn. Some ascend to the Father. Powers themselves admit powers. For where everything ends, everything eternally begins. And the seven spheres say together, Wisdom, love, justice, beauty, splendor, knowledge, immortality.